I'm Kate Constable with Galvanize, and I am so excited to continue our Who Not Do series, where we interview some of your favorite figures in the sports industry to find out more about who they are rather than what they do. And I'm honored today to be joined by Melissa Jacobs. She's the founder of the Football Girl website and podcast, while also having worked for ESPN and Sports Illustrated. Melissa, being the first is something that seems like a theme for your career. You want to go to law school to be the first female sports agent representing mainstream male athletes. You're the youngest executive producer in the history of KNBR Radio. Carved out a space for yourself at ESPN, creating the talent production department, founding contributor for ESPNW, NFL editor at Sports Illustrated. That is a long, long list. And so as I look at everything you've done, I can't help but think that this woman has no fear. Am I right to think that? First of all, I'm really impressed with your research. Uh, you really, uh, you really dug into the resume, Kate. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would say I have no fear. Um, gosh, I would say I almost had a little bit more fear, or a little less fear, when, when when I was younger and didn't have kids and and other factors in in my life. Um, that is something that I always think about. Is like always trying to get back to to my roots of of being that like, I don't care if people reject me, I don't care about this and that and, and the ramifications and it's okay to do this thing that isn't that desirable because it might take you to this place. And um, I mean, I still hold a lot of that in me, but it's interesting that you bring that up because I do, it's actually something like even this week is trying to juggle, you know, distance learning for my kids and like what my career is gonna look like this NFL season. Um, that's something, the, the fearlessness that I, that I actually do think about a lot. And you mentioned when you were younger, maybe um, a little bit more fearlessness or less fear, I should say. Where does that come from or, or how did you get there at such a young age? Um, I guess this is a, a, a who not do, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, how, how who-ish do we get here? But I think for me, it was... Um, my my upbringing in the sense that I, I actually grew up largely with with a single mom um not with much um we were actually on welfare for a period of time and there's a part of me that's just like this isn't what i want i just have to scrape and claw and like create a, a life for myself and also because i didn't have that sort of traditional like perfect you know mother father marriage I didn't, wasn't even like thinking about marriage or anything. It's just sort of like career, career, take care of yourself. Like you have to fend for yourself. You have to make your own money and your own path. And like, no one's ever going to come in and like provide you a safety net. So I think for me, that that's really where it's, it, it stemmed from. And you started playing fantasy at age, fantasy football at age 14. Um, and you served as, like three years ago, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, serving as a ghost drafter for your stepdad's league. Mm. So how did you find the confidence in yourself back then when it came to a girl talking football? Well, my stepdad needed me. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, he still does, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, I always loved football. I always knew football. I always, um, you know, I had more male friends than female friends because I like to talk about sports. Um, luckily now that's, it's like more commonplace obviously for, for anyone to, to go and, you know, deepen into the sports world. But yeah, I mean, I didn't know any other women who um, were playing fantasy at all. And um, my my stepfather actually was part of a league and it was like a father son <laughs> league. Um, so he kind of like smuggled me in and um, had to get like special permission for me oh, to be wow. part of, it, it, it wasn't hard. And, and then he started doing really well. So I was always like known as a secret weapon. But I, I literally, I mean, league. <laughs> to this day, I still draft for him because he just, it's, it's what, he's one of these people that just will watch on Sundays. Well, he'll watch Monday night football, Thursday night football, but like, what's happening doesn't really seem to seep in. It's like he uses it to zone out where yeah. the rest of us who watch football are like trying to break down every play and like implement right. every rule to, to every, in every scheme and whatnot. Um, so he needs me and I 
straight up draft for him, like from round one to round 15. Wow. So well, when I'm drafting yeah. my league or my team later this season, I like to know who to call. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I should start a service. That, that's not a bad idea. Add that to the football <laughs> girl site. Um, so my dad is no longer here. Um, and for the past couple of years, my stepdad has been a really important figure in my life. So how much did your relationship with your stepfather shape who you are and where you are today? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, and I'm sorry to hear about your father. Um, my, yeah, I mean, he wasn't one of these, you know, traditional, like you hear so many, you know, men and women talk about getting their sports fandom mm -hmm. from their, their dads or, or I guess their stepdads. Although like, because I run the football girl, I hear about a lot of like grandmas and <laughs> it's, which is awesome. Um, yeah, he, 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 I don't know that he instilled, I don't, I don't, I want to give him more credit um, than I sound like I'm going to. I can't think of, you know, all those values I talked about in, or, or the one in terms of fearlessness, like that just kind of came from the upbringing for him. I mean, he kind of gave us some stability, um, but it also was like another barrier to navigate. I, I don't know about your relationship with, with your stepdad, but, or, you know, step parents in general can, can be really hard, right. um, especially I, I was an only child. So it was just sort of like navigating this new person. And I had never really, had because my my uh, biological father like just wasn't around um, um, and is so I just didn't really like understand this like what the role of the man and the family was supposed to be so I think it kind of taught me to have him around and like learn his personality which was very different from mine um, there was definitely not you know obviously the DNA isn't there. So, sort of, it, it really helped me to learn sort of like just how to deal with, with men, like men who would become my bosses and men, you know, who I guess I would date or whatever. Not that that's now, I guess, but you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just don't really like, I was friends with guys, but I don't really like understand them as sort of, you know, role models or, um, you know, a, authority figures in any way. So I think he helped me sort of like instill that respect that I probably didn't really have because I didn't have, or I don't have the greatest biological father. For women today, getting jobs in sports, it's so much easier. I mean, we still have a ways to go, but it's easier nonetheless because of the path that you've paved for us. So beyond anything that you have or will accomplish in your career, what you've done for the next generation of women in my eyes is your greatest legacy. Do you ever stop to think about that? Wow, I don't think about words like legacy. And I just, I feel like I look at people like, you know, Andrea Kramer and um, Michelle Tafoy. I look at those women and I'm like, gosh, I wouldn't be able to have a job. I wouldn't be able to go in and out of a locker room if it wasn't for you. Not that I'm like that much younger than them, but um, I feel like those people did what they did and then that's just kind of allowed the rest of us because i you know my career when i first started going into you know major league baseball clubhouses or nfl locker rooms sure yeah i was like one of like one or two women that would be in there and it was super weird but it didn't seem to take that long for the numbers to rise they're not where they they're still not where they need to be but i never really have thought about you know i am I want to help younger women. I mean, it's definitely something I think about wanting to. I don't think that I'm the person who's done that. But if I've done even like, you know, 0.0001% of, of making it better by being hopefully a legitimate journalist um, and showcasing that, that we belong there, then yeah, that's kind of getting chills right now, actually. <laughs> Well, you've set up a great example for me and I know so many others. So thank you for all that you do. And thank you for spending time with me today. Um, appreciate learning more about who you are rather than just what you do. Thank you so much, Kate. This was really fun.